got a new what? school bus picked up for the kids. And we just barely pulled in the driveway and as you can hear in the back back there, they're already trying to get seats pulled out. Hey guys, um, as you can tell the sun's going down, we're gonna run out of time pretty quickly and we're gonna have to finish this tomorrow or continue this project tomorrow. But, oh no. Someone hold this, Emmy come hold this please. So I can finish this. All right, so um, if you guys have been watching us for any time at all, you probably know by now that we try to recycle things. Um, and use what we have to do what we need to do. And this is a perfect example of that because we are working on building a divider wall in between the two kids' bedrooms in the school bus. And um, today we went to Lowe's and bought uh, eight two by fours, um, two sticks of black pipe for the gas lines and then all the fittings that we needed for that and it was $250. So um, in an attempt to save some money, we remembered or Wiley remembered that we had some of these, um, let me make sure you can see that on the camera. We had these uh, freezer panels. Um, we had gotten these a couple years ago. We had started building a walk-in freezer out here um, before we had gotten this shipping insulated shipping container over here, which we ended up turning into a walk-in freezer. But um, anyway, so we had these panels and we decided that these would probably work really great to build a divider wall. So that's what we're going to be using. Um, we saved a bunch of money by not having to buy insulation. Um, we don't have to buy two by fours and uh, we may eventually cover them in like that thin wood paneling or sheetrock or something. But um, I think that'll work out really well for a divider wall. So Wiley had built this template that he's using right here. <laughs> About three years ago. Yeah, he had, let me show it to you. So we were working on a, when Wiley and I first met, he had gotten a school bus from a friend of his, which is actually the same guy that we got this bus from. And we had used it, we were gonna turn it into an RV. Well, some friends of ours decided that they were gonna move to Montana. Was it Wyoming? Wyoming one of, one of those, Wyoming. And um, they ended up finishing out the conversion of the school bus. We had given it to them. They finished it out and then they went and lived up there for a summer before they realized that it was just too darn expensive and that they wouldn't be able to sell their house here in Oklahoma and buy a house there. So they came back. Um, but anyway, so he cut that template to, to match the arch of the ceiling and he's using that to cut this. Oh, nice. Look at that. There you go. Now we gotta put that one in and then measure and see how short we have to cut this one. You're hung up on that uh, screw. Um, it's almost straight. I think it needs, I don't know. What do you need? I think the needs top needs to come over a little bit more. more yeah. Right there, right there. I think that's good. 41 would be a super tight freaking fit. Yeah. 
and really, by the time we build bed frames on both sides of that, that wall ain't going nowhere. Yeah. What was once one will now be two. Voila. Now, I know that's probably not the prettiest wall y'all have ever seen. And I think it's gonna work really, really well. Wiley just went to go get some spray foam. We bought a couple cans. Um, and he's just gonna fill in the gaps around the top and around the edges and down the center with the spray foam. Another reason is uh, that we use these is because they're free and we already had them laying around uh, and they're already insulated. So hopefully we're hoping that that'll work as a kind of a noise barrier because um, Hunter has his piano that's eventually gonna go in there. You know, yesterday, whenever I was arguing with you at the store, I exceeded my expectations a little bit. Up I there. told you you were awesome. <laughs> <laughs> when we were shopping yesterday, y'all, um, Wiley said, you've got a lot of confidence in me to think that I'm gonna get that close. So we bought some stuff to kind of trim it out with. And, um, but he's even surprised himself. I think he did a really good job. I mean, that's pretty dang close for kind of eyeballing it. This is pretty much gonna work as, you know, two different things. This is actually gonna be the glue that holds the wall in. Plus it's gonna seal everything up. I'm glad my mistakes makes you think I'm good. <laughs> 89 and three quarter inches. It's a little sketchy getting in and out of here, y'all. <laughs> Wiley makes it look easy, though. <laughs> That covers those wheel wells about perfect. Yeah, just almost. We have a question for you. Get up in there so you can see what Wiley's talking about. We want your opinion on something. So these wheel wells don't go all the way under your bed if we do it the size of your bed. Mm -hmm. So I can move this forward, and but this is just going to be bigger than your mattress. You're going to have like this much sticking out past your mattress. Or the other option. Or we can fill just the box that comes out and only this area will be sticking out past your mattress. On both sides. On both sides. That first option, if that's easier. Okay, 40 and a half. So I'm thinking whenever we actually finish out the inside of the bus, we'll probably have enough scrap pieces that then we can cover this with whatever we're, you know, to match. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But just get something in here to hold insulation, insulation right now, and then we mm -hmm. can finish that out later. Mm -hmm. You're a good screw holder, Lily. Now it's just getting this covered and he's done. Mm -hmm. And insulation in there. Yeah. Well. And getting Hunter's bed on his beret. <laughs> That's gonna be the most well insulated part of the whole bus. <laughs> I think we've got about R75 in these wheel wells <laughs> and about R one and a half on the floor. Yeah. Or no, it's R five. Six, six and a half. Is it six? Say six. It was five for oh, the yeah, foam. five, and then the wood would might be another one and a half. Yeah, or Maybe. half, half or one. Yeah. <laughs> now we gotta figure out what to cover it with. All right, guys, we're uh, we're on the hunt for some junk. 
see if we can save some money and not have to buy plywood for these bed frames. We thought about using these. Um, these are some old tongue and groove uh, flooring boards that we picked up somewhere. And we were gonna use those on the bottom of the bed, but I don't think we have enough. Oh, hey, we got tons of tuba sixes and stuff right there. But I bet they're all crooked. What's it gonna matter if they got a little gap in between them? Well, what I mean is like if they're warped, it's a twisted. They'll screw, they'll screw down and straighten out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But those ain't, you heck, you can look at those. Those ain't twisted. Welcome to our junk pile, guys. There's plenty of them. How we can do both beds with tuba sixes. About uh, three years ago, Wiley and I tore apart a deck and replaced it. And that's what all these big boards are for. So we have some two by eights and some two by sixes that we think will work perfect for the bottoms of the beds. Um, we're all about reusing what we have, saving money. And so this is what the kids are gonna get. Um, <laughs> he can carry those two and you can carry that one, Hunter. Let's not get hit with this. One of the crappiest things about using recycled lumber is that it often has screws and nails and stuff in it that you have to take out before you can use it. It also tends to be, you know, you can tell that this is a little worn. It's old, um, but it is still sturdy and good. However, um, a lot of the boards that we had up there are warped or bent or um, just not shaped correctly. So we picked out the best ones we had. Look, oh, you do have a magnet. Look, there's a piece right there. There it is, y'all. How do you want to get up there and lay on it? <laughs> is it comfy? Mm -hmm. We got Hunter's bed frame built. Um, and I think that it ended up being actually the perfect height. So that wall, we're probably going to cover it in sheetrock or um, some thin like quarter inch paneling or something to make it look nicer. Uh, so we left a little bit of gap on the other side of the bed. Also, I figured by making the bed frame just a little bit bigger, it would give him a place to tuck his blankets in. This little nightstand worked out absolutely perfect in here. Um, let me just give you a full view of the room. Being as the mattresses don't kinda, don't really cover this entire width, uh, we figured this will be the perfect space down here to build a shelf or a couple shelves. But yeah, um, now it's time to go to the other side and try to get it done for Emily. But then after that sometime we'll be doing running all the gas lines and then they'll be able to stay in here and stay warm. But then that still leaves. We still have to run electrical. Uh, we need plug-ins and we need lights. We also need uh, to do the inside, so we need to find figure out how we're gonna insulate. Um, Wiley said he looked it up and we can get a spray foam kit on Amazon to do this whole thing for about $500. So that's one of our options. That foam board was really nice to work with. I really hate that fiberglass insulation because it gets in the air, you get itchy, it gets in your nose, and oh, it's just awful. So I really hate that pink 
in uh, pink fiberglass stuff. But anyway, so um, it's almost to the point where they can stay in it and be comfortable for now. And then we just have cosmetic stuff to do, but we still need the electrical and we still need the gas. And then the insulation, the rest of the insulation and walls can come later. Also, in order to get Hunter's piano to fit in here, we're going to have to cut this door out as far as we can up this way and come back down and um, put in a full size door back here. Right, Wiley? Yep. Put it in like a house door. Yep. All right. Uh, so we're going to get started on Emily's side now. Do you know why you're doing that, Emily? Because we're going to put screws all through it. Yep, and it's a lot easier to know where to put screws at if you're if you have a straight line to follow. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> I'm not educated in this. Ow. I don't know what I'm doing. I was not qualified or in training. Now the board on the ends is out there on the edge. There you go. Duda, get off. There you go. See, now you can pull that out here, and that'll be room for shelves back there and shelves down there. Nice. Yep. Well, guys, Emily's bed is done, and now um, I think she <laughs> likes it. <laughs> We're going to put paneling on this wall, and I want to make a bookshelf that, like, hits the bed right here so that I can scooch up against it and put drawers to like a foot above it maybe like six inches to a foot above it so that I don't kick all the things off the shelf while I'm sleeping and then maybe one over there on that wall and we're gonna leave these two windows open so that if it gets too hot in here I can and then what are what else are you gonna do with it what about the wall oh, yeah we're gonna put a wall right here so that my feet can't dangle off like they are right now. And we're gonna do a little arch for it so I can get in and out and make it look pretty. <laughs> so if you guys didn't understand what she said, that wall we're going to cover with sheetrock or paneling or something to make it look prettier. Um, because those freezer panels, while they do the job and I think they're a really good use of material that we already had laying around, um, they aren't pretty at all, so we'll be covering them with sheetrock or with that, uh, like, painted paneling stuff. And then we'll be building a bookshelf the whole length of the wall, and she'll have several shelves um, to keep all of her books and stuff on when she builds her collection back up. At the end of the bed, there will be a shelf there, um, or maybe a few shelves there. So, but she still needs access to these windows. When we move to Arkansas, we won't have air conditioning. Um, and so I think it's really important to have a cross breeze. She will, we will be using fans. Um, and in, in experience, when we've camped in the summer and it's been really, really hot, um, so long as you have a fan pointed at you, you can sleep just fine. But to have a... To have a cross breeze and have a fan, I think that'll be good for her. And then also, she wants to put up a kind of like a faux wall here. And so her bed's kind of going to be in a cubby hole. And so she'll, there'll be an arch uh, that goes into her bed. So she'll be able to get in and out easily. Um, and then on each end, probably, we'll do a narrow bookshelf that goes up the whole side of it on each side of the arch. Uh, that's pretty much the plan that we have for that, right? Mm -hmm. um, anybody who isn't aware, we are building this full-size school bus into two bedrooms for two of our older kids um, because when we move to Arkansas, they will need a comfortable place to live, and this is our what we're doing. They had another school bus, but we had a an electric heater malfunction and catch fire, and they lost everything that they had. 
So we're building out this new bus for them. And I mean, we've already spent, I don't know, about $2,500 between the price of the bus and the materials so far. We've already spent about $2,500 on this project. And we're not the kind of people that just have that kind of money laying around. We live paycheck to paycheck like most Americans. All right, now I think this is gonna be the end of this video. We've got another project that we are fixing to start, but I, I, we're gonna make it a separate video. Other ways you can help. You can pray for our family. You can share this video out. And also don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And that tells YouTube that this content is worth watching. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.